Hi, this is Jack Spierko at the Ice Marketing Group, and today we're going to go over your blogger settings for your blogger uh, blogs. We've already gone over how to set up a blog and how to do some basic functions in it, and there's a lot more lessons that are available to you on how to do some really interesting things, but one of the things you really need to do right from the beginning is get your settings the way that you want to. So I'm already logged into my blogger account, and you can see I have a little test blog I have set up here to, uh, to use for today's lesson. And I'm going to go into settings. As I do that, I want to point out something to you. All the settings you're going to see are settings that I have not messed with yet, so they're all sitting on default. So if you see me leave something a certain way, and you want it to stay the same way that I've explained it, you don't have to do anything. These are kind of the, like, again, the default settings when you set up a blog. I'm going to tell you, in some instances, do whatever you want. This is your preference. In some instances, I'm going to make a very strong recommendation that you, you, you do things a certain way. I'm going to try to explain why. And in some other instances, um, I, I'm going to say absolutely you should do this or absolutely you should do, not do this. Still your choice, still your blog, but, but those are the ways that I'm going to classify my recommendations here. So what I'm going to do is click on settings for the blog that I want to edit. And I'm going to go in, and the only thing I've done additionally here, so you don't have to sit here and watch me type, is, is the first thing I'm going to recommend that you do, which is go ahead and modify your description. Put some type of description about your blog. Make sure you get keywords like, I'm using Chardonnay, Great Wines, $10.00. Uh, different things that I would like to be ranked for. Get those into your description. Uh, they're not going to have a huge effect on your rankings. Don't think I'm going to go in here and put in inexpensive Chardonnay in my description, and then tomorrow morning, this blog is going to show up on Google ranked for inexpensive Chardonnay. There's a lot more work that has to be done to get that kind of a search engine placement, but if you do the work, this can be a factor in getting it to happen, but what's more important is this description is generally what's displayed by the search engine, so when somebody searches for it, they see the title and the description displayed, and if you have your keywords in that, it's kind of like advertising. They're more likely to click, so make sure you get those terms in there, and you want to think about your title as well when you do this. Now, let's go down here. Here's one of the things I had already actually changed. I'm going to put it back the way it was. It's, it says, add your blog to our listings. You want to say yes. This makes your blog public and available in the blogger search. Uh, the next thing you want to do, go down here. It says, show quick editing on your blog. This is up to you whether you want this or not. Uh, it will not affect people that are viewing your blog in any way, shape, or form. It's really for you. What this is, is let's say I'm logged in to my blogger account, and I'm viewing my blog like a visitor would. I'll see little icons where I can click to quick edit a section of my blog if I see something I'd like to change. I like that feature. I'm going to leave it on yes. Show email post links. Okay, This is another personal preference. You can do what you like here. I actually recommend you change it to yes. Let me explain what this is to you. This is when you're sitting on somebody's blog and you look and you say, email this post to a friend. And they click that link and it brings up your email program and they can click send and it sends them a, a message saying, I think you might enjoy this blog post, here's where to find it. I see no reason to disable that. I really like that because it, it allows viral spreading of your blog. So I like that there. Uh, this is one I, I recommend you just leave it alone. This says show compose mode for all your blogs. Uh, this adds compose mode to your post editor, sometimes known as a WYSIWYG. And this is all the ways I've shown you how to put a post uh, up, make a post, insert images, uh, do a link. All those things have been done in, the, in this, this WYSIWYG, which is what you see is what you get is what that stands for. I would just leave that alone. Uh, down here it says delete your blog. Obviously, you don't want to click on that. Now you want to click save settings. And while I'm waiting for these to be saved, and, and that was as quick as it needed to be, you'll see I got a message if your settings were saved. Whenever you're making changes in these areas, the basic, publishing, formatting, before you go to the next subcategory, make sure you hit uh, save. If you don't, Blogger will remind you. If you don't save, the changes aren't going to take effect. So now let's go to the next category, which is publishing. Here we are in publishing. There's not a lot of options here. Uh, one is you can actually change the domain name of your blog. Uh, that's okay right in the beginning uh, if, if it's available. Uh, you can change it to a different name if you didn't like the name you originally picked. Once you start to get your blog built and published and in the search engines, I highly recommend you do not change it in the future uh, because it may affect whatever type of indexing you've been able to get in Google, especially MSN uh, or, or Yahoo. Uh, next thing you want to look at, it says notifywebblogs.com. Now what this is, is your blog has something called a feed. And I'm going to show you how, what your feed settings are in a minute. But what that means is that every time you make a post to your blog, there is a, a place where all those posts are sent out 
to various uh, uh, different places. Anybody that let's, wants to put you in, let's say, uh, their, their feed reader uh, would subscribe to your feed. What this does when you change it to yes is it sends a notice, an update of that feed being updated to a service called webblogs.com. That is used by a lot of blog search engines to find new content. And blog search engines index content very quickly because blogs are about current events many times. So if you're indexing a blog three or four days out or three or four weeks out, you're not going to be as relevant to your audience who's looking for new information when they're looking for blogs. So you want to change that to yes. The reason Google sets that to no is if somebody goes and sets up 30 or 40 free spam blogs, they will keep them out of the web blogs indexing uh, if they didn't take this step. So you want to make sure you take this step. Now I'm going to hit save settings. Now I'm going to go into formatting. And this is basically the look and feel, how your blog is going to look and feel. Uh, the first one is going to decide how many posts you're going to show on your main page. I like to show between 10 and 20. I'm going to change this one to 10. And then you can choose posts or days. I highly recommend that you choose posts because people tend to neglect blogs after a while and you might go a couple weeks without posting anything to your blog, especially if you have multiple blogs. And if you use days, then what's going to happen is you're going to end up with like just one post on the front page of your blog and it's not going to look very active. So I recommend you decide to use posts. It will let you put up to 999 posts on the front page of your blog. I think that's excessive and I do not recommend that you do it. I would stick somewhere in the neighborhood between 10 to 20. If you want less, that's fine too. The next is going to be the date header format. This is just how your dates will be displayed. I like January 15, uh, 2007, this format. You are free to change it to anything you like. This really doesn't affect anything. This is a personal preference issue. The next one is the archive index date format. That is simply on the side of your blog, there will be a listing to archives, older posts, and how they're going to be listed is posts you made January 2007, 107. Again, this is personal. I like January 2007. You pick what you like best. Your timestamp format, uh, you go in here and you can set to be a full date for your timestamp. You can use just a very simple without AM, PM, anything that you want to do there. I like plain Jane 1246 PM. Uh, the next one is your time zone where you'll select the time zone, whatever time zone you're in. Select that and uh, you can set your time zone for any time you want. I happen to be in central time. So I've set mine now to central time. Language, uh, if you're publishing in a foreign language, it makes sense to note that here. Uh, most people will probably be using English. Convert line breaks. This defaults to yes. Leave it at yes. What this what this does is it lets uh, when you hit return the breaks be seen between your paragraphs. Show your title field. Leave that on yes. That's important. Uh, show link field. This is kind of cool uh, for some really advanced settings that we're not going over now. For now, I would just leave that at no. Enable float alignment. Uh, this allows images to, to float so the text can wrap around them like we've shown you in another uh, uh, lesson. Leave that alone. There's no reason to change that. And I'm going to put something in here just to show you how this works. Uh, I'm going to write in this is my template. And I'm going to save settings. And what this is is a post template. If, you, if there's something that's always in your post or you always want in your post, you can put it there and I'll show you how that works in just a second. All right, well, I'm going to have to go ahead and conclude this part of our video. Be sure to tune in for part two to see the rest of the presentation. And thank you for watching.